Now then, following on from the last video about this uh, DC-DC converter and the potting on the inside and there was um, a fair bit of comment about that yeah, about corporate strategy anyway we have here a an MPPT charge controller and it is faulty and I've come across several of these so what's going on there anyway I've undone the screws screws there there and there and there and there and on the underside there was a couple of screws there but the rest are from the other side okay so we're going to have to release that potting somehow because I've tried levering it and you know you get that feeling we're going to break something so I've got a plan and the plan involves clamping this to the bench and then getting the hot air gun out and warming this plastic up hopefully not um, destroying it you know we're not going to burn the surface but we want to warm it up really well interestingly here let me zoom in we've got those LEDs there and on this one stay there's the LED and actually there's a light tube there so I suspect those LEDs are not the light tubes underneath so we haven't got any wire into those and then there again we've got some interesting details which I'm going to zoom down on we've got a communications port but unlike the Victrons that I'm used to which would use an Ethernet connection they've gone and made their own yeah another corporate strategy thing and then next to it there's a rotary switch and you can set the charge voltage through that yeah you have to look in the manual and you know put it on number one it's say I don't know 29 volts for a 24 volt system on number two it's 29.3 that sort of thing yeah so there we go so let's just try and get this um, plastic cover off they're quite robust these plastic covers so hopefully it'll take a fair bit of leverage and as you see this potting it's a bit sort of slightly rubbery so all we've got to do is warm the outside up and hopefully it will all pop apart but if it doesn't there's nothing lost because it's yet another um, Victron MPPT charge controller that doesn't work be interesting to hear from people how many people have got one of these that didn't work okay we've got the heat gone it's going to be noisy so I'll just do the start of this and then time it and where are we 
that's six minutes and the temperature is 98 degrees C okay something's happening I suspect it's breaking okay whoopee that is some success okay I want to inspect this because yeah just because okay so that was soaked at 98 degrees C yeah for a good few minutes well it took six minutes to get there but look yeah this potting or encapsulation is not to do with the protection of the circuitry it's purely to keep people out yeah because it doesn't go down onto the circuitry does it yeah it just glues the top on that is corporate strategy for waste yeah and um, Dyson's just as bad yeah making stuff that's not repairable anyway interestingly yeah down here there's a fuse yeah so I think we should check that fuse because this unit is totally dead yeah so we're gonna check that um, but first I've got to go off and check the pottery kiln so I'll be back with you in a minute okay we're back it's a, a I think it's an 80 amp fuse yeah so we've got the meter set on continuity and we have nothing I wonder if it's that simple it's an 80 amp fuse made in India and it's an Eaton E A T O N this is ridiculous absolutely ridiculous yeah so you've got to warm them up I would say go to 120 degrees yeah just so I could barely touch the surface of that but you want to go a bit warmer still yeah and you know I was talking about the LEDs and the light tubes there they are just there three of them okay I wonder if I just sold a bit of wire I'm not facing the right place and I solder a bit of wire across there I wonder whether this charge controller will then work or I mean it takes a lot to blow a fuse like that unless of course it was a faulty fuse who can tell the vagaries of world production okay I've just put a piece of wire across that soldered a bit of wire across it yep and we have the positive connected to there and it's marked and it's going to a 12 volt battery so we're just going to check things before we connect up Can we see? I think we can. Um, that's going to be the negative and that's going to be the positive. There we are, 13 volts. Right. First of all, connect you always with these charge controllers, connect the battery. So let's just see what happens. 
Oh, yeah, we're not happy. What is not happy? It's a very good question. We've got more blue smoke dragon here. Is it one of these capacitors? I don't really know. Hmm. Got some wires going to there. Okay, that might be a, a heat sensor. And looks like we've got some FETs down there. Let's just see what happens again. I had great hopes, but you know, when a big fuse blows, there's always a reason. Are we ready for this? Yeah. Okay. At some point, I'll probably have that board off and have a look because it's obviously something underneath that's not happy. And I'm assuming because it's underneath, it will be uh, a FET or something like that. But would it smoke like that? I don't know. Um, anyway, we found out something. We can take the cover off with heat. And, um, and we've learnt there's a fuse there. But there's something else adrift. I think that um, I'll call for thoughts from my viewers first before we start digging into that. What creates smoke like that? Looks like I can actually get to all the screws and undo them. Right, hopefully you found this interesting and I will catch up with you very soon. Cheers for now.